Welcome to this course on electrocardiogram, interpretation and application in clinical practice. In this lecture series, today's talk will be on vector electrocardiography. And myself, Dr. Brenda, Associate Professor, Department of Physiology, Chetinad Hospital and Research Institute. The learning objectives of today's talk will be electrical circuits and recording of electrical events, principles of vectorial analysis of ECG, determining the axis, axis deviation and dextrocardia. To start with the electrical circuits and recording of electrical events, as we already know, electrocardiogram is the record of the electrical events of the heart. These electrical events of the heart are mainly due to the depolarization and repolarization of the muscles of the heart, that is the atrium and the ventricles. So first, let us know how this depolarization affects the ECG on the, when we try to record it as an electrode. So when an electrode is placed on the surface of the body, the event that happens in the heart will be recorded as an ECG. So the first event that will be happening in the heart is a depolarization event. So when a wave of depolarization passes through the heart muscle, as you can see in this picture, considering a heart muscle, as the wave of depolarization goes towards the heart muscle and a positive electrode placed in the center of the heart muscle will record the ECG. How does it record? So when the wave of depolarization passes before the positive electrode, it will be indicated as a positive deflection on the ECG. As this wave of depolarization now passes along, that is it goes near to the positive electrode, that is it is nearer to the positive electrode now. So when it reaches the positive electrode, the deflection will come back downwards again to the baseline. Next, when the depolarization goes or passes away from the positive electrode, the deflection on the ECG will move downward and forms a negative wave. Hence, when the complete depolarization of the muscle take place, it will be recorded as a biphasic wave on ECG. So the final depolarizing wave will, as it moves perpendicularly to the positive electrode, will produce a biphasic wave on the ECG. This is the basis of recording of ECG due to the effect of depolarization of the heart muscle. As I said in this previous slide, considering the same fact in the heart, now considering the heart with a wave of depolarization, the depolarization usually passes from the atrium to the ventricles and it is always downwards slightly towards the left side. And when an electrode is placed, for example, electrode A is placed towards or onto the direction of the depolarization, the depolarization will be a positive deflection on the ECG. That is depolarizing wave toward a surface electrode, that is uh, A, electrode A, will be recorded as a positive deflection. Similarly, when an electrode B, which is away from the wave of depolarization, will produce a negative deflection in the ECG. And any depolarization wave which moves perpendicularly to the electrode, considering electrode C, will produce a biphasic wave. So the effects of repolarization are precisely the opposite of those of depolarization. So now considering heart as a three-dimensional organ, we keep the 12 standard ECG leads, that is the six limb leads and six precordial leads, which we have di discussed previously, will view the heart at different angles. And that is called as angle of orientation. And it will, when considering the six limb leads, which will view the heart in a vertical plane that is called as the frontal plane as depicted in this figure. These leads show the electrical forces of the heart moving up and down or left and right and is viewed as a circle in the frontal plane. And the angle of these lead is determined by drawing a line from positive to negative electrodes. These principles are very important in understanding the vectorial analysis of ECG. Uh, so considering the, uh, to determine the uh, 
angle of orientation for all the leads that is the limb leads and chest leads. Uh, Let us see what will be the angle of orientation. First for the three standard limb leads that is the lead 1. So, in this figure the lead 1 the left arm is positive and the right arm is negative hence the angle of orientation is at 0 degrees. For limb for lead 2 the legs are positive the right arm is negative hence the angle of orientation is plus 60 degree. For lead 3 the legs are positive the left arm is negative and the angle of orientation is plus 120 degree. Coming to the augmented limb leads first with the AVL the left arm is positive the other limbs are negative and the angle of orientation is minus 30 degree. For the augmented limb lead AVR the other limbs are negative and the angle of orientation is minus 150 degree. For the lead AVF the legs are positive the other limbs are negative and the angle of orientation is plus 90 degree. So, this picture now shows all the six leads in the frontal plane with their angles of orientation and it is necessary to memorize these angles to determine the axis of ECG. To re-emphasize you can see the lead 1 is at angle of 0 degree, lead 2 at an angle of plus 60 degree which means it views the heart at an angle of 60 degree and lead 3 at one, uh, plus 120 degree, lead AVF views the heart at plus 90 degree angle, AVL at minus 30 degree angle and AVR at minus 150 degree angle and I re-emphasize it is necessary to memorize these angles to determine the axis of an ECG. So, uh, this slide again gives the chart on the lead angle of orientation of the different leads. Lead AVR is at minus 150 degree which is considered as a right sided lead and the inferior leads are lead 2 at plus 60 degree, lead 3 at plus 120 degree and lead AVF at plus 90 degree. The left lateral leads are lead 1 at plus 0 degree and lead AVL at minus 30 degree. So far we have seen the limb leads coming on to the chest leads or the precordial leads. We have already seen in the previous lectures where regarding the positioning of all these precordial leads. So, there are 6 precordial leads V1 to V6 which are placed over the ventricle. For example, lead 1 is placed directly over the right ventricle, lead V2 and V3 over the interventricular septum, lead 4 focuses on the apex of the left ventricle and lead 5 and lead V5 and V6 over the lateral left ventricle. And both these uh, limb leads and the precordial leads will form a group of leads which is being emphasized in this table. The anterior group of leads will include V2, V3 and V4. The left lateral group of leads includes 1, AVL, V5 and V6. The inferior group of leads includes lead 2, lead 3 and AVF and the right ventricular leads include AVR and V1. So, based on this let us go on to understand the principles of vectorial analysis in ECG. To understand what is a vector I would like to give an analog of a football game. Considering the football ground as the goalkeeper strikes the ball we can see that the ball can go on to any direction but the final area where the ball has to go is into the opposite net. So, similarly the vector is the sum of all the average forces of these direction. Similarly, in ECG, it, uh, the uh, ECG uh, electrode records only the average current flow at any given movement. So, what is a vector? The average electrical movement which is represented by a single arrow is called as a vector and the vector is recorded by the ECG electrodes. This vector has two things one is the angle and the length. The angle of the vector represents the average direction of the current flow and the length of the vector represents the voltage. This vector is translated as e ECG wave patterns when recorded by the 12 ECG leads. 
as the ECG reads records this vector, it is being um, uh, represented as waveforms. And we know the waves of ECG, which include P wave, QRS complex, and T wave. Now, how can we apply this vector analysis on these waves of ECG? Coming to the P wave, we know that P wave represents atrial depolarization. So, the vector current flow for this is from the atria, that is, which points down from right to left slightly inferiorly. So, any lead that views this wave of depolarization as moving toward it will, pro, will record as a positive reflection on ECG paper. In this figure, you can see that this wave moves towards the lead 1, hence it is recorded as a positive reflection on ECG paper. So, the P wave will be a positive wave on lead 1 in the ECG. In the frontal plane, Additionally, AVL also will have a positive deflection. Inferior leads like AVR will show a negative deflection because the wave is moving against the lead AVR. So, it is a negative deflection on the ECG, whereas the lead 3 will produce a biphasic wave because the angle is perpendicular to the position of the lead. Considering the horizontal plane, that is with the chest leads V1 to V6, the left lateral leads V5 and V6 will produce a positive wave as the wave is towards those leads and the V1 lead will produce a biphasic wave because this lead is perpendicular to the wave of depolarization in the atria. Hence, the normal range of P wave vector will always lie between 0 to 70 degrees. Next wave of ECG is the QRS complex which is first initiated by the septal Q wave, which represents the depolarization of the interventricular septum. And it is the first to depolarize and usually begins from left to right direction. And, it is, and this is viewed as a tiny def negative deflection in leads such as lead 1, AVL, V5 and V6. The remainder of the ventricles will depolarize next then that will dominate the remainder of the QRS complex, especially the R wave. And the vector current will also uh, flow leftwards as you can see in this diagram. And this vector points from 0 to 90 degree and it is considered to be normal. Coming to the R wave of the QRS complex, in the frontal plane, the R wave is considered as a positive deflection in lead 1 and lead 2 as the wave of depolarization is going towards these two lead, lead 1 and lead 2. Whereas, the S wave will be a deep negative deflection which will be seen in lead AVR lying rightward. In the horizontal plane, lead V1 and V2, we will record a deep S wave as the current is moving away from them and lead V5 and V6 will have a positive deflection as the wave of current is moving towards them and that is considered to be tall positive R waves. Whereas, lead V3 and V4, they are called as transition zones and they are called a biphasic wave. This pattern of increasing in the R wave amplitude from right to left in the precordial leads is called as R wave progression, where V1 is the smallest R wave and V6 is the largest R wave. Coming to the T wave, which represents ventricular repolarization, it has a variable variability in its appearance. That is, repolarization usually begins in the last area of the heart to have been depolarized and usually travels backwards. Because both an approaching wave of depolarization and a receding wave of repolarization generate a positive deflection on ECG and the same electrodes that will record a positive deflection during depolarization, which is tall R wave, will also record a positive deflection during repolarization, a positive T wave. It is typical and normal to find positive T waves in the same leads that have the tall R waves. To summarize the vector aspects of electrocardiography, the P wave is usually small and it is positive in left lateral and inferior leads. It is biphasic in lead 3 and V1 and the normal range of P wave vector is 0 to 70 degrees. With the QRS complex, it is usually large with tall R waves in left lateral and inferior leads. 
with the R wave pro progression seeing from V1 to V5 and a small Q wave is seen as in one or several of the left lateral leads. And the vector for QRS complex always points from 0 to 90 degree. This is very important while we studying while, while we study the axis determination. The T wave is variable with positive in all leads along with the R wave. Coming to the next concept that is determining the axis in an ECG. To determine the axis in an ECG, we need to know what is the mean electrical axis. In ventricular depolarization, which is represented as QRS complex in ECG, the first vector here you can see number 1 represents the septal depolarization and the successive vector 2, 3, 4, 5 and till 8 represents the progressive depolarization of the ventricles. And you can see these vector will swing leftward because the electrical activity of the left ventricle is of larger and predominates the ECG. The average of all these vectors 1 to 8 at one instant that is called as mean vector and the direction of this vector, mean vector is called as the mean electrical axis. And this is very important in determining the axis of ECG. So now axis is how to determine the axis of an ECG. The axis of an ECG is mostly determined by, me, by the QRS complex wave. The mean QRS vector as we see points leftward and inferiorly and it represents the average direction of current flow. And we already seen the normal direction of the, of the QRS mean vector is between 0 and plus 90 degree that is from here 0 to plus 90 degree. So with this falls the normal QRS axis. How to determine the axis based on this QRS complex? Three methods are identified for axis determination. First is the quadrant method, second three lead analysis and third is the isoelectric lead analysis. Let us see in detail about each of these methods. First is the quadrant method of axis determination. This is the most efficient way to estimate the axis of an ECG and because it is uh, using lead 1 and lead AVF. And in these leads, we examine the QRS complex and determine whether it is positive, that is, it is an upward deflection or a biphasic deflection or a negative deflection. So based on these, we will determine the axis of an ECG. So, if, uh, so when there is a positive QRS complex in an ECG, in lead 1, that puts the axis in the same direction as that of the lead 1 that is at 0 degrees and positive QRS complex in lead F, Q, um, positive, QRS com, uh, com, positive QRS complex in lead AVF will align the axis with the lead AVF that is at plus 90 degree. So combining both these colored areas, the quadrant of overlap, this is the quadrant of overlap which determines the axis of ECG and it is normally between 0 to plus 90 degree. So, if lead 1 and lead AVF have positive QRS complex, then the axis always lies between 0 and 90 degree plus 90 degree and that is considered to be normal axis. The next step in determining the axis of an ECG is by the 3 lead analysis method, which includes 3 leads that is lead 1, lead 2 and lead AVF. In lead 1, a positive QRS complex puts the axis in the same direction as lead 1. A positive QRS complex in lead 2 aligns it with the direction of lead 2 at plus 60 degree and lead AVF we have already seen. So when we combine all these areas, the area of overlap will determine the axis as before and if both lead 1 and lead 2 are positive, the axis will lie between minus 30 and plus 90 degree and that is considered to be normal. So it is from here minus 30 degree to plus 90 degree that is considered to be a normal axis. The next method to identify is by means of an isoelectric lead analysis. It is a more precise method of estimation of the axis. If the QRS is positive at any given lead, the axis will be in the same direction of the lead. If the QRS is negative, at any given lead, the axis will be in the opposite direction. This concept we have already seen before, I am trying to re-emphasize again. 
If the QRS is biphasic at any given lead, the axis will be 90 degree or perpendicular to that of the lead. So, in this method, there are three steps in determining the axis. Step 1, you have to find the biphasic lead of the ECG. Step 2, you have to find the positive lead that is lead with the tallest R wave. Step 3, you have to calculate the axis that is the QRS axis is plus or minus 90 degree perpendicular to the biphasic lead and the direction is always pointing towards that of the positive leads. So, based on this method, let us try to solve this example to understand uh, the, best, the better way of determining the axis of an ECG. So, considering this ECG strip, how do you determine the axis of an ECG by using the three method? The first method is the quadrant method where we use lead 1 and lead AVF. So, let us see what is the QRS complex in lead 1. So, it is considered to be positive. How about lead AVF? Here also the QR, QRS comp complex is positive. So, coming to the next method that is the three lead analysis. In addition, we have to look at lead 2 also. So, lead 2 also gives a po positive QRS complex. So, the axis is for since it is positive in all three leads, the axis of the quadrant usually lies between 0 and plus 90 degree and it is considered to be a normal axis. Coming to the third method to have a precise estimation of axis by means of the isoelectric or biphasic lead analysis method. In that, the step 1 is to find the biphasic wave. In this ECG strip, where do we find the biphasic wave? You can see it is at the AVL. And step 2, you have to find the positive leads. We already know there are 3 positive leads, lead 1, lead 2 and lead AVF. Step 3, the QRS axis it is at plus or minus 90 degree to that of the biphasic lead. So, the biphasic lead is AVL. So, AVL is at minus 30 degree. So, this should be plus or minus 90 degree to minus 30 which will be equivalent to plus 60 degree or minus 120 degree. The final step in analysis is it is the direction is always towards the positive electrode. That is the positive electrodes here are 1, 2 and AVF. So, the direction towards the positive electrode hence the QRS axis is considered to be normal that is at plus 60 degree and that is considered to be a normal QRS axis. So, considering this let us go to some deviation aspects that is axis deviation. The normal QRS axis again I emphasize is between 0 and 90 degree with a positive QRS complex in lead 1 and AVF. If the axis lies between 90 and 180 degree that is called as a left right axis deviation here. And here how the ECG will appear lead 1 will be negative and lead AVF will be positive. And if the axis lies between 0 and 90 degree that is called as a left axis deviation and how does the ECG appear? In lead 1 it will be positive QRS complex and lead AVF will have a negative QRS complex. There is another type of deviation called as extreme right axis deviation. It happens rarely where the axis becomes totally dis disoriented and lies between minus 90 and plus 180 degree. That is called as extreme axis right axis deviation. Here the QRS complex will be negative in both the leads that is lead 1 and lead AVF. Also the P wave has its contribution towards the axis. The normal P wave lies approximately between 0 and 70 degree and the T wave axis is usually variable and it approximates with the QRS axis lying to about 50 to 60 degree of the QRS axis. Why do we have to study the concept of axis? It is very important in clinical application in diagnosing hypertrophy of the heart and enlargement of the heart especially right and, ven left, vent uh, right and left ventricular hypertrophy and atrial enlargement. So, this is a summary slide which uh, says about the axis of the heart, most of which have been, it has been covered in the previous slides. So, axis refers to the direction of the mean electrical vector and it represents the average direction of the current flow. Three methods of determining the axis, quadrant method, 
tree lead analysis and isoelectric lead analysis. The most precise method is the isoelectric lead analysis and uh, you can memorize this table to understand what type of deviation could be possible in relation to the lead 1 and lead AVF. And now uh, let us solve this uh, graph in e of ECG to determine the axis. So, on this ECG comment on the QRS axis, uh, tell if it is normal or is there any deviation. So, what type of method do we choose? We will do all the three methods to solve this. First quadrant method lead 1 and lead AVF. So, lead 1 it is a negative wave and lead AVF it is a positive wave. So, when when lead 1 is negative and lead AVF is positive, we have seen in earlier that it could be a right axis deviation. The next method, 3 lead analysis, we would include lead 2 here. In lead 2, it is a biphasic wave. Hence, in right axis deviation, the quadrant could be between plus 90 degree or plus 180 degree. Coming to a precise estimation of axis with isoelectric lead analysis method, step 1 we need to find the biphasic wave which we already know it is lead 2. Step 2 we will find the positive lead that is lead AVF which will denote the direction of the axis. Step 3 we have to take the QRS axis plus or minus 90 to that of the biphasic wave. So, here the lead 2 is biphasic so it is plus 60 degree which is biphasic. So, it should be plus or minus 90 to 60 which will be equal to plus 150 degree or minus 30 degree. So, it should be either from minus 130 or to uh, plus 150 degree. But we already know that the direction is always towards the positive lead that is the positive lead here is AVF. So, the direction is downward here with a right axis deviation. Hence, the correct axis for this ECG is at plus 150 degree with right axis deviation. Based on this, I would like you to solve this uh, ECG and practice on your own uh, using the three method of determination of the axis. To complete this session, a few points on dextrocardia. Dextrocardia is defined as a condition where the location of the heart is in the right hemithorax with the apex pointing towards the right. We, al we already know that the apex is always pointing towards left leftwards. This is an abnormal condition where the apex points towards the right. There are a lot of investigations that can be done to determine this. A chest x-ray could show a mirror image of the heart on the right side. ECG is very classical. It will show a right axis deviation and all the complexes in the ECG will be inverted. Predominantly negative P wave, QRX complex and T wave in lead 1 and a positive QRX in lead AVR and there will be low voltage V3 to V6 leads and reverse R wave progression in the in the uh, precordial leads. And an X-ray abdomen can also be done which could show fundal gas shadow on the right side and the left lobe and the left dome of the diaphragm is at a higher level. Thank you for your patient uh, listening and a happy learning.